Welcome, welcome, welcome to Where Do I Fit, a production of Warriors Heart USA and Power to Change. Where Do I Fit is a program where you come to to address issues that are affecting survivors of trauma. We often feel like we are a square peg in a round hole. Well, today I want to continue our conversation about homelessness. You know, oftentimes when I am engaged in a conversation with people about homeless people, I hear stories and descriptions of homeless people of being drug addicts. They are alcoholics. They are sex perverts. They are criminals on the run. Um, they're crazy with multiple mental health issues. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you that there are some people out there that are like that. But not everybody is. There are many people who are on the streets or couch surfing that are trapped by their experiences. Now, let me share with you my story. Back in 1986, I found myself homeless. Now, for about three years, I had been in a relationship that was very toxic. As I describe it today, I tell people that it was a perfect storm. Now, she was going through a divorce. I had been through a divorce. My father had died. I had brought some baggage with me from the military uh, where I had experienced a friend of mine who had died on, on a patrol, a couple of other friends of mine who had died to freak accidents. I was carrying some heavy baggage. In fact, one of the biggest bruises to my soul was that my 48-year-old father had been diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. The surgeon who removed the tumor, who said it was the size of a golf ball, told me at the time that my father had just about a year to live and gave me the responsibility to tell my family the outcome of the surgery. Now, I knew my family. And I knew that if I had told them that my father was going to die, they would treat him differently. That might have been a poor decision of mine not to tell them that he was going to die. It gave them all false hope. But it was a wound that I carried, and my father died 11 months after they removed the tumor. He was one month into his 49th birthday. Now the marriage to my sweetheart, high school sweetheart, and the mother of my child had ended abruptly, so I thought at the time. And I was involved, now I was involved in a toxic relationship. It was a give and take relationship. We hurt each other equally. We violated each other's trust and space. Then something happened that completely ended our relationship altogether. I couldn't handle the pain. So I quit my job, jumped on a plane, and I ran away. I ran away to Charlotte, North Carolina where when I stepped off the plane, I found a van that, was, that would take me into the downtown Charlotte area to a hotel, implying that I was going to check in at this hotel, so I got a free ride. I had my luggage with me, but I had nowhere to go. I didn't have a job. I didn't know anybody didn't, and barely had any money. 
I realized when I stepped off that van into downtown Charlotte that I was now homeless. But the big thing I remember, I realized that I was running away from my responsibility and my problems. I left everything behind me. I was hurting. Now, the first night in Charlotte, I found the homeless shelter. Now, when I was in Nebraska, where I ran away from, um, I, I worked in law enforcement. I worked in the jail. And the one thing that I always heard from the prisoners that were there is never stay in a homeless shelter because people will rob you. You can't sleep there. They'll beat you up. They'll 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 rob you. So, I didn't really heed the um, the warning about not staying in a homeless shelter. I did, but I didn't sleep at all that night. Now you have to be there at a certain time in order to be allowed to be in, and then they get you up very first thing in the morning and they feed you breakfast and then they kick you out in the street with nowhere to go. Now, I took my luggage, my, my, my bag with all my belongings in it, and I went and found a highly wooded park. And I found a place where I could hide my stuff where nobody would find it and it would be protected. This was my survival skills from being in the military. Well, then I went and got a newspaper and I began to look for a job. The first job that I got was a dishwasher at a retirement home. Now, the one thing at the retirement home that um, the food sucks. Let me tell you that. There's, there's no flavor in it. Um, but they gave me an opportunity to where I could take a shower there. And if I needed to, I could wash my clothes. I'd explain to them that I was just arriving in Charlotte and I had no place to live yet and so on and so forth and that I was staying at a shelter. Well, I stayed at the shelter one night. And then I got another job where I was working at a real estate relocation where I would help people find rental units within the confines of Mecklenburg County and the city of Charlotte. Now, I didn't take them out. I was basically offering them listings and making appointments for them. Um, it was a low-paying job, but it provided me with resources. Now, after that, I was sleeping in this park, this wooded park. Now, I was, like I said, I was able to eat at the retirement home and I worked at the real estate relocation company um, but I didn't have any place to live so I was sleeping in the park I was taking a shower at the retirement home and washing my clothes these are perks that most people on the street don't have but I kept my distance from people because Honestly, I didn't trust anyone by this time. I didn't trust them because I had been betrayed and rejected by the people that I thought loved me and I loved them. The unfortunate thing is I didn't learn from those toxic relationships because, let's be honest, when you're lonely... Well, let me use a different analogy. When you're hungry and you don't have a guaranteed meal, you go looking for it anywhere. And you pretty much eat what you're familiar with. Well, that's what it was like for me with my emotions. I found myself getting involved in relationships, even as homeless, with people who resembled the relationship that I was running away from. They were toxic. I was in a great deal of pain. 
And I often hit it. I didn't drink. I didn't take drugs. I would work as long as I could work, keeping my mind busy, and then I would go back to the park. Now, first thing in the morning, I would go to the retirement home. I would do dishes. I would take a shower. I would eat the flavorless breakfast they made for the people there. And then I would go on to the real estate company. I did this for nearly 11 months. Now, granted, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't always sleep in the park because I did meet people who allowed me to couch surf. But I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. Then, by some weird way, I don't remember right now, I heard that my grandmother, my mom's mom, had passed away. My grandmother was probably one of my biggest supporters when I was a kid growing up. And I was heartbroken because, you see, I couldn't go back home. I didn't have the money to buy a plane ticket. I couldn't get off of these jobs that were supporting me. This added to my soul wounds. Well, as I told you in the first episode, the story of the man in the hole, that was me. Because I realized at that point I needed help. And I didn't know how to get help. In the 1980s, the Veterans Administration really didn't have any programs for people who were dealing with emotional wounds. The public really, the public sector really didn't have anything as well. But I remember that I decided that I was going to end my pain. And I went to a free clinic, explained to them that my back was hurting, which wasn't really a lie because I'd been sleeping on the ground. Um, but I told them that my back was hurting and I was really having trouble getting rid of the pain. So they gave me a prescription for muscle relaxers. Filled that prescription. And a couple nights later, I decided that I was going to end my pain. I felt like a square peg trying to fit into a round hole at that time. Not only was I physically homeless, but I was emotionally homeless. I didn't know where to turn. I really didn't know anybody to ask for help. I couldn't ask my family because I felt like they had abandoned me. That's why I ran away. There were no programs at the time. So one night I tried to take my life with these pills. But fortunately, I was found shortly after I had taken them. I was taken to the hospital and they addressed my issue and someone gave me a hand out of that hole. Now since then, I got to tell you, I have been working hard to try and address the survivors, veterans, their families, and first responders, survivors of trauma. Because the one thing about experiencing trauma and not having hope is you feel homeless. You may live in a nice house. You may live in a nice apartment. But you still don't feel like you belong. So Warriors Heart USA, we are partnering with other organizations. This is going to be in the, in the northern Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, the, you know, the northwestern part of Virginia. We are going to try and create a project that will address not only the mindset of homelessness, but also the physical aspects of homelessness for veterans and their families. We're going to call it Amber's Village. And the thing about Amber's Village, it's just not a name. It's a project that is giving honor to a teacher 
who inspired my daughter to embrace veterans who are dealing with experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder. My daughter is now a senior in college. She too has established an organization that reaches out to veterans. But Amber Marie Luciani was a teacher that inspired students to embrace the men and women who have fought for this country and have come back with soul wounds. So therefore, we are going to honor Amber with Amber Village. And while we're doing that, we are going to continue her mission of reaching out to veterans who are dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder, their families, and as well, those who feel homeless and are homeless. We want to build a transitional home community, calling it an Amber Village, but we want to build tiny homes, not big elaborate homes, but tiny homes, transitional homes, places people can lay their heads down at night and feel safe and feel like they belong. And from that, we pray we can reestablish trust. Not only trust, but build an environment of socialization where they want to belong, to be part of something. And through that, we want to build that genuine community where these men and women feel like they are part of something bigger than themselves. That by offering them a hand up out of the hole, that they too will become mentors and reach out to their brothers and sisters that they serve with or those who have served in other branches that are going through life, feeling homeless. Let me tell you, there's a lot of circumstances why people are homeless. I live in the Washington, D.C. metro area, and I can tell you that the large percentage of homeless veterans in this area, they're not homeless because they don't have a job. They're homeless because they can't afford the housing. They may be homeless because they don't have a rental history to where a landlord will take a chance with them to rent them property. If they don't have a rental history, nine out of ten times they're not going to get a place to live. The Veterans Affairs in the Washington, D.C. area has established a place where they can go and get a shower every day if they need to. They can go and wash their clothes. They can use computers to look up for jobs. The Veterans Affairs has programs to reach out to the homeless amongst us. But there really isn't enough resources. So I wanted to talk about homelessness today and share with you my story to let you know I have been there, done that. I, I know the pain. Honestly, I also know the embarrassment. The feeling of being a square peg and somebody trying to fit in a round hole. A man's soul is worth fighting for. Warriors Heart USA is fighting for the souls of every man and woman that are dealing with soul wounds, invisible wounds, things they can't see. So join with us as we embark on this project. And I encourage you to visit our webpage, which is pwr, the number two, chg.net. And go to, on our webpage, go to the Amber Village Project. We'll keep you updated on what we're doing, the partnership.